Shalom Chavrim. Uh, nice to get a chance to speak with you. And uh, the video here is uh, hopefully will be short. And uh, I know I always say that and it ends up being longer. But uh, I just wanted to bring your attention to a, 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 some verses here in the book of Daniel, especially in light of the times that we're living in. Uh, I'd like to say, though, first before we get started here, thank you for those of you that have been giving to the ministry here lately. Uh, it's, it's been at a very uh, crucial time for us, and we, we don't normally like to say a whole lot about those things, but we realize God knows, and He's placing it on the hearts of the people, and, and I thank you for that. Uh, secondly, an exciting news, Dr. Chuck Missler, I uh, heard from his secretary today, the two of us may be uh, airing on a radio program in the very near future. Uh, I will let you know those details as they unfold and uh, I'm sure that will be exciting. Right now, Dr. Missler is in New Zealand, uh, so we have to uh, pick a program and everything where we can air together, uh, talking about the current events uh, that's going on around Israel right now and, uh, uh, and how that matches up with, with the Bible prophecy. So uh, no doubt it will be exciting. It always is. I always enjoy talking with Dr. Missler, uh, and, and uh, it will be a, certainly a privilege to, to get to work with him again like that. Uh, so be in prayer for that. Now, here's what I want to bring to your attention here in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Now, I know that different people have different opinions about who the Antichrist is. Now, we know there's an Antichrist. We know there's a false prophet. But I, I did on, uh, and by the way, those of you that are on Facebook, uh, Stephen Dinoon or Stephen Ben Dinoon, I forget how it's listed on my Facebook account. Look us up. Friend us on there. We're gl glad to have you come on. Um, I started sharing, I have a, an electronic Bible called the uh, Uversion, I think is how it's called. It's a free app you can get and download on any of your applications there. I started using that far more frequently and making notes and sharing those notes with uh, on Facebook. It's the only place I know to do it. I know, I know it has a way you can follow in there, but I don't know how that works. Um, but uh, you can come on board there and see the things as the Lord lays things on my heart, and I make more notes about it if you would like to do that. I thought it might be something that might bless you as well, and uh, I don't know the extent of the program or how it works, but I happened to turn in there, and I went back to Daniel uh, recently, and when I was making a note, I dealt with a note on the prince that shall come. Sorry about the noises outside, a little storm starting to brew outside, so it's shaking the palm trees against the windows. Um, anyway, and I really wanted you to ponder this because the note that I made even kind of made me think deeper. Uh, when we look in uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, it says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and until the end of the war desolations are determined. Now keep in mind, I have had questions asked me about that as far as when is the Messiah actually cut off, and some people believe it's in the midst of the last week. Clearly Daniel puts that he's cut off before the last week, and not for himself. Of course we know it's a sacrifice for everyone. But the, the interesting point has always been the prince that shall come. The people of the prince that shall come. Now, the prince that shall come, if you take and kind of separate that little part of the sentence, the prince that shall come is a future prince that's coming. Nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing to do with Yeshua here. But he says the people. Now, let's just take so you can understand the, the, the correct way of saying the sentence in English. Take out the prince that shall come and just stick it on a shelf aside because that's the future event. Okay, so we would say the people, um, excuse me, if I take that out, of the prince shall come, the people shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The prince that shall come is of the people that destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, or the, uh, um, and that was, of course, as we know, it was Titus the Roman general. So therefore, the prince that shall come is going to be a Roman. And, of course, as many of you that know the teaching I do on that, I believe that it's none other than it would be a pope that would come on the scene one day who would actually be that prince that shall come. Now, some people believe that that would make then this pope, possibly the very one that we have now, which I do believe it is, they would say that makes him the false prophet. But let's examine that a little bit more carefully. When I say that, that, that this prince is the Antichrist, most people say that's not so. It's going to be Obama. It'll be an Arab. 
But even a Greek scholar that was watching one of my videos, he pointed out in the comment there, he said, Steve's right. The word antichrist is a Greek term, antichristo, which means instead of or in place of Christ. It is a substitute for Christ. Now, we know that it's written right in Rome in the, in the Vatican, the, word, the Latin word, vicarious filiadilia, which means instead of the Son of God, or in place of. And that is actually, uh, I believe it's on the Pope's triple crown that is written there. And the Catholic Church doesn't make any argument about it. They believe that the Pope is, takes the place of Jesus Christ on earth. And therefore, he is a substitute, just like the word Antichristo says, in place of or instead of. Now, think of this as well. If he takes the place of Christ, or supposedly is, that's Antichrist. It's not like you would think, English sometimes we think anti being against Christ. No, it doesn't mean that. That's not where the word comes from. So, therefore, he's only a substitute for Christ. Now, we know that the scripture plainly says in uh, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, that Yeshua, Mashiach, the Mashiach that would come, would be the what? Prince of peace. Correct? He's the Messiah is the Prince of Peace. But here's another prince that comes. And in this case here, he's going to be a prince, but he's a false prince. And he will be a Roman. But what's interestingly, interesting in saying that, so if he's in the stead of Christ, or, or he's trying to be the anti, or you know, take the place of Christ, then what do we have here? What is the modern day Pope that we have right now doing? Pope Francis, who as many of you know, is still Petras the Roman, as according to the prophecy. We know that from his background and the things that he chose there. But he is Roman by birth because his parents, so he's Roman descent. He's Roman because he is a Pope of Rome. And what is he doing? Trying to bring peace to the Middle East. He is, in that regard, the Antichristo Prince of Peace. He is trying to take the place of Christ, bringing in peace. And then what did the scripture say in the Christian Bible? They will cry, peace, peace, and there is no peace. Shimon Perez recently said to the Pope in his visit, you're the only one that can bring, bring peace to the Middle East. The Muslim nations are looking to the Pope to bring peace to the Middle East. So if he is to be a false type of Christ, who was truly the Prince of Peace, then he's trying to mimic his steps by being a Prince of Peace as well. So no wonder why Daniel labels him as the Prince that shall come. Anyway, God bless you, and uh, we look forward to your comments, and, and thank you so much for, for supporting the ministry here, and perhaps maybe before long, depending on how God leads, Maybe it will come to a place if the Lord so desires that we can do this full time with you. It would certainly be a pleasure to serve uh, the, the children of God around the world. Uh, we love you and God bless you.